1065 to 1136. Okay. And the last part, if the yield maturity falls to 6%, will the current yield be less more or less or more than the yield to maturity? Okay. So the answer here is more. The current yield will exceed the yield to maturity on the bond because the bond is selling at a premium. And uh, at maturity, the bond holder will receive only $1,000 of the face value, reducing the total return on the investment as measured by the yield to maturity. And uh, you can see there is an inverse relationship between the yield to maturity and the bond price. As the yield to maturity decreases, the bond price will increase. And when the yield to maturity increases, the bond price will decrease. Okay. And if you think it is in the formula here, the yield to maturity is just the R, the discount rate here. So when the discount rate goes up, it's become larger, the yield to maturity increases, then the price as a result will decrease. Okay. So that's the inverse relationship between the yield to maturity and the bond price. Are we clear on question two here? Mm -hmm. I see someone has. Now, if we are good, well, I'm going to move to the next question. So for question three, suppose that you buy a TIPS, which is an inflation index bond with one year maturity and the coupon rate is 4% paid annually. And assume you buy the bond at its face value of $1,000, the inflation is 8%. So what will be your cash flow at the end of the year? What will be your real return and what will be your nominal return? So for the first one, um, in what it's asking what the cash flow will be at the end of the year, because it's a one year maturity bond. So you are going to receive both the interest payments, the coupon, as well as the face value in the end of one year. Okay. So the, the, uh, the interest here is 4%, the coupon payments is 4%. And uh, the face value is 1,000. So um, the interest plus the face value is 1.04 times 1,000, which is $1,040. And then you need to adjust for the inflation. Okay, So both the interest and the face value will be adjusted by inflation. So that will times another 1.08%. Okay. So you, in total, you are going to receive a total payments of uh, $1,123.2, okay? And the next is ask, uh, asking you what's your real return. 
because here it's um, um, it's already adjusted for inflation. For, so you, what you receive, what do you, you get the promise for is the coupon rate, then it's it's the real return you are going to receive. Okay. So for a tips, if it tells you the coupon is four percent, and that's the real interest payments. So the real return is four. Um, the real return equals to coupon rate equals to four percent. And uh, for the nominal return, you can use the formula for the nominal return. Okay, it equals the one pl one plus the real return times one plus the inflation and the minus one. Okay. So the nominal return is 1.04 times 1.08 minus one. Okay, so there is like a Fisher equation. So approximately the nominal return equals the real return plus the inflation. But here in this question, it doesn't ask you to get an approximated nominal return. You need to calculate the exact number. So you need to calculate one point Use this formula to use the, to calculate as 1.04 times 1.08 minus one. You cannot just adding the four percent to eight percent. Okay. So this is question three. Are we all good? Okay, let's move to the next one. Question four, a bond is credit rating provides a guide to its risk. Suppose that the long-term bonds rated AA currently offer yield to maturity of 7.5% and A rated bonds sell at yield to maturity of 7.8%. Suppose that a 10 year bond with a coupon rate of 7.6% is downgraded by Moody's from double A to A rating. Is the bond likely to sell above or below the par value before the ground downgrade? And is the bond likely to sell above or below the par value after, after downgrade? Okay. Let's take one minute to think about this question. So let's log into this question together. You actually don't need to do any calculation for this question. You need to need to understand the concepts between the like the relationship between the price and the yield to maturity here. So again, for before the downgrade, so um, the bond yield to maturity, okay, uh, is seven point six, okay, but for other bonds with with the same risk. With the same level of risk as double A, they are offering yield to maturity of 7.5%. Okay, so in other words, uh, before the downgrade, this bond is offering higher higher yield to maturity than the benchmark. 
So if it's over offering higher yield to maturity, okay, you need to price the bond above the par to offset this excess return. Okay, so you are going to sell higher. So the price should be above the, the par value. And then after the bond is downgraded to to uh to rated A, okay, downgraded from the double A to A. And uh, the benchmark for A is 17.8%. 7 okay, it's not surprising because the higher the risk of the bonds, the higher yield of maturity you are supposed to get to compensate for this excess risk. So when you are comparing to benchmark of A rated bonds, you are now the coupon rate is only 7.6. So the bond price should be um, should be below the par so that it will be compensating the insufficient coupon payments. Okay. So we only need to understand the concepts, we don't really need to do the calculation to compare those numbers. Okay, are we good on this one? Okay, if we are good, I'm going to move to the last question and it's going to be also a concept question. Okay, so a bond A is a 10 year US treasury bond and a bond B is a 10 year corporate bond state whether the following statements are true or false. So A, if you hold bond A to maturity, your return will be equal to the yield to maturity. B, if you hold bond B to maturity, your return will be equal or less than the yield to maturity. And C, if you hold bond A for five years and then sell it, your return could be greater than the yield to maturity. Okay, so think about those Think about the difference between the treasury bond and the corporate bond, and then think about those three, um, those three statements. And so the key difference here between the treasury bond and the, the corporate bond is that uh, we usually assume the risk for treasury bond is zero. So there is no risk for holding the treasury bond. Okay? But there is uh, always a risk for holding the corporate bond. So any corporation, even if it's triple A, they still have a, a chance of getting default or getting bankruptcy. So to compensate for this, default risk, there's default premium on the bond, okay? So for those three statements, they are all true. The first one, if you hold bond A to maturity, your return will be equal to the yield to maturity. And uh, so this is basically just uh, like the definition for yield to maturity, you're just holding a TOD, TOD maturity, you will get this yield. And uh, because it's a treasury bond, for bond A is a treasury bond, there is no risk of getting default, okay? So A is true here. And B is also true because the corporate bonds, they have default risk. So the actual return has the possibility of being below the promised yield, 
Okay, remember the earlier example we see in question one, I guess, um, saying there is a chance that the company can only um, pay back 80% of the face value. Then at this time, the yield to maturity will be lower than the promised yield. Okay. And the last one is also true because uh, if the interest rates fall, the price of the bonds will rise and the real return can increase, okay? So if you hold the bond to your maturity, you will get whatever is um, the promised yield to maturity rate, given there is no default. However, if you sell it halfway, you hold it for a few years and sell it out, then your return can be higher than the yield to maturity, um, depending on the interest rates. Okay? It can be either higher or lower, depending on the interest rate. So that's all the questions I've prepared. Any questions? Any other confusions? Okay, if we are all good, then that's all for today. Uh, remember to do the homework, do some practice, and uh, the second midterm is already scheduled. So check the syllabus for the dates. Yeah, of course, we still have the second midterm, and it's going to be online. Okay, uh, check the syllabus. I don't, I don't remember, I don't have that in top of my mind. So uh, for the second midterm, there are going to be a mix of multiple choice questions and the short answer questions. So for short answer questions, I may ask you say, so any of those questions you may say in the short answers or in the multiple choices. But sometimes I will say, if it's a calculation question, I will say, I will say write down the steps. So if you are using a financial calculator, okay, you can just write down the numbers you input here. So you just tell me what's the M you input, what's the interest rate you input, what's the payment you input, what's the future value you input and uh, what's the PV you get, okay? So that's the steps I'm looking for in the short answers. Okay. Yes, uh, we are going to have the spring break starting the starting in Wednesday, okay? And uh, I will upload the videos for chapter seven on bond evaluation either today or tomorrow, okay? So study the videos by yourself and there is no class meeting tomorrow.